Hello everyone, my name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining me again for another video. Today we're doing something a little different, which is testing out the RevoPoint 3D Scanner. This video is sponsored by them, but it is, I think, the only sponsorship I've ever done where I personally sought them out. And there's a couple reasons for that. If you're a fan of the channel and you've seen some of our regular reaction content and have been watching for any length of time, you know that we also create our own films, short films, sketches and skits and things like that. Our most recent one as of filming this was a Star Wars short film. And one thing that we do in that is a lot of VFX work. I'm also a 3D printing hobbyist. I have two 3D scanners in my garage. I use them constantly making new cool things. So this is kind of a double whammy for me because what this will allow me to do is to scan regular objects and create a digital double of it. And I believe this one will actually scan it in color too. I know some of them can't do that, but I think this one does. So I can scan like bus or toys or like someone's face and then be able to 3D print it. But one of the big reasons that I want to use it is to be able to put it into a VFX software like Blender and be able to animate things. I've been trying to do a short or some kind of series with some of my friends for a while and because our schedules are so hectic, we are all married, we have kids and jobs and everything, it's hard for us actually to physically get together. So I was thinking of doing some sort of animated thing and I have a ton of action figures. So one thing that we're going to do in this video is to take some action figures, 3D scan them into software, learn how to rig them and then do a basic animation. And this is perfect because I am an absolute beginner. I'll be probably like where a lot of you are starting, where I have never used anything like this. I don't know how to use Blender uh, software. In our short films, I have a VFX artist, actually a couple of them, specifically to do some of those sequences. So I'll film the practical plate and they will complement it with their VFX on top of it. So we're gonna unbox a little bit of it. We're going to take some of my action figures and uh, try to scan it in. We're gonna put it into Blender, and I might even take something and make it a, an object file, and then a, and then slice it to maybe to print off in one of my 3D scanners. So it's a very technical video, uh, but it's still very cool. It's a very niche thing, I understand that, but it's the kind of stuff that I'm into, so. From what I understand, other 3D scanning things um, have to be connected to your laptop or have to be connected to your phone or something. But one of the reasons I asked for this one specifically is that it's supposed to handle everything on the fly. Like it's just one single device. It processes all that information for you in the device itself, which can then be moved over to your software. Uh, it comes with some warranty things, quick start guide, which I will definitely need, and some tracking markers. I, I don't think you'll need this for every single thing. I think it's like a, a case where if it's something light with like a light background, these will help the scanner just track it. All right, here we go. It's handheld. Looks pretty cool. All the stickers and stuff are still on it. I'm really appreciative of this because they also send a little bust. It looks a, look, looks like Caesar or something for you to practice on in case you don't have anything of your own, which I have plenty of <laughs> uh, things like this. 65 watt charger for it. Oh, adapters in case you're not from the United States. Oh, this is wonderful. So this is a lazy Susan. It's so that you can put a small item on here and it'll slowly rotate for you so you can just keep the scanner still. I actually thought I was gonna have to buy separately or try and just do it on my own, go around an object, so uh, I didn't realize that they sent one. Some safety straps. Oh, cool, a little tripod. Cloth to clean the sensors and the lens. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this set up and charged and everything. Oh, and one other thing I should have mentioned earlier, and I let every company that I work with that I do specialized videos like this for, is that I'm gonna be very, very honest about how I feel about the product. Uh, I had another one I did, um, might've been the 3D printer, where I was very clear there were certain things about the setup, about the user interface, and things like that that I really didn't like, and then I praise where praise is due. So I wanna be very clear here that I'm not gonna BS you. I'm gonna let you know how easy it is, especially as a brand new beginner, or how difficult it is. So just wanna get that clear. I appreciate them sending me the Caesar bust. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Mighty Morphin Power Rangers <laughs> bust. Uh, this is actually from a different sponsorship we did, uh, uh, I think with HalloweenCostumes.com, not sponsored. But they sent this to me and there's only like a thousand of them that were made. So I think this would be a good one to try and just scan in and uh, see if I could actually 3D print a replica of it. I've gone in and put in all my settings, I connected to the Wi-Fi, it was all pretty clear, and so far it seems to be pretty user-friendly. I was able to, it walks you through exactly like what you need to know, some of the differences in the settings, and now it's just a matter of trial and error testing things out. I'm also trying to determine how like close I need to be. Another reason I wanted to use this is because the back plate of this is actually textured a little bit. So I want to see if that'll actually translate 
over or not. All right, that's trial number one. All right, so that took a couple minutes and you, as you saw, I was pretty sloppy in how I was doing it. And uh, this is not a very clean um, image. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and use the uh, Lazy Susan that they sent to try and fix it because I was like moving around and um, you can also like pause it, which I wasn't doing. Uh, so I would like just move around awkwardly and I would try to just sort of guess to reposition. Uh, but the parts that were working seem to be pretty smooth. It seemed to be pretty accurate to how it looks. But as you can see here, it, it clearly started getting confused and I was moving around the way that I was. So we're gonna go ahead and try again. So this is the tripod that comes with it. And I'm gonna set it to continuous shooting. So with that moving slowly and this being stationary, uh, we should have a pretty good, um, a pretty good model. Pause it, lower it down a bit. I might just hold it. All right, All right that one seemed to go a little bit smoother. I'm gonna go ahead and compile it in this and hopefully it'll be a much better looking model. Here we can see the first model, first attempt I did and it's uh, pretty sloppy. This is the software that's actually on the computer. And this is the second model. I'm gonna go ahead and have it compiled into a kind of a finalized version of it. Here it is looking much cleaner. And there's some of those details I mentioned on this particular model that had a texture on the surface of it. And a few holes just from areas that I didn't scan properly. I probably just wasn't low enough. And fortunately, the software actually comes with a feature that will fill in those holes for you. And there's some fine tuning things that I'm still learning as of recording this. And as you can see from the visor, it's not quite perfect. There's some imperfections on the chin. And I'm not sure if in the software I can actually smooth those things out. I know we can do that in Blender. But before I go into trying to touch it up and make it perfect, or if I want to rescan it, uh, and if I want to fix that hole in the visor, that's actually where I would use the tracking dots, which I didn't use on my second attempt. I just want to see if I can take it as is and make it an STL file that my 3D printer will recognize and I can just go ahead and 3D print it just the way it is. And it looks like I was able to do that with relative ease. So the process of scanning the object, putting it into software, and then being able to create a physical model of it it's pretty streamlined. And at this point, it's just refining my skills with the 3D scanner, understanding the settings themselves better so that there's less post work in the computer, and then learning either through the RevoPoint or Blender software how to touch up some of those imperfections or details that didn't come out quite as smoothly. You should be able to create near perfect replicas. I had my 3D printer begin printing a one-to-one -one replica of the Power Rangers model, but after it would get about 9% of the way through, it would just freeze at this one point. I tried it again and it got to the exact same point and froze again, so I was wondering if there was actually a problem with my printer. So then I scaled down the model to a much smaller version just to see if I could actually get through a print and was able to print a smaller replica of the Power Ranger helmet, but I still wanted the full-scale one. I've tried a fourth time now on a regular size Ranger head. I was able to get a little further into the print and it keeps pausing. Uh, this time about 19% of the way through. The other time is about 9% of the way through. So I can't tell if it's an issue with the printer, the hardware, the software, if it's a code issue or what. But now I've gone ahead and uh, updated the firmware and I'm also going to utilize my other 3D printer. I'm gonna have these both running simultaneously. And if that one also stops, uh, then I'll know it's probably an issue with the code or the way that it was sliced. But hopefully one of these will, will work. I'm hoping this will, I'm hoping the firmware update will fix the issue too. So I might have two, I might have one, or I might have none. And after updating the firmware, it wouldn't even begin the print. It wouldn't begin any print actually. So I just left it to old reliable to get this Power Ranger helmet made. And we'll check back at the end to see how it did. Having some issue with that 3D printer, but I have the other printer going now and hopefully I can get a full one-to-one -one replica. And part of the reason I wanted to do that the way that I did was to see how difficult or easy it was to just scan something right out of the box and get it on the 3D printer with minimal tinkering around with software. Now, the other thing I wanted to do, or at least start in this video, was scanning an action figure and putting it into Blender and rigging it. I don't know if I'm gonna get all the way to that point or getting to the point where I can animate it. Maybe we'll save that for part two, but I, I did want to see that. In preparation of trying to do a project like that with some of the guys and with Jen doing uh, some of the voices as well, uh, I've been slowly building up a Dragon Ball Z Dragon Stars collection. And it's just been growing steadily over time with me buying like one or two 
every once in a while when I go to Target, and I've just slowly amassed a pretty decent sized collection. 13 year old Holden would be very proud of me. <laughs> And inevitably, because this is just the, how I am, and if you've been watching the channel, you know that I've done this more than once, where I've accidentally bought duplicates of the same ones. I'm going to go ahead and unbox one as like a test one and try to get him into the software. And I'm probably gonna tie up with either Devin or one of the other VFX guys uh, to see if they can sort of help me with learning some of the basics of Blender. On a sentimental note, I was actually talking to my wife. Our baby just turned one last week. And you know, a lot of people will do little handprints of their baby or little footprints uh, to commemorate those things. But I was like, how cool would it be, just like as he's growing, to have like a one-to-one -one scale replica of like his little baby hand or his little baby foot that my wife can have or we can display somehow. That sounds kind of, maybe that sounds too creepy, I don't know. But just knowing like, hey, this is, it's not just a handprint, like this was his actual hand. This is what his little hand looked like the same scale and everything and like print it off and maybe do that like every year and you can see his you know his little foot or little hand grow again that may sound creepy coming out of my mouth in my head it's sentimental and cute <laughs> but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those action figures and we'll get to scanning this is the action figure that i have a duplicate of it's actually a pretty cool one ultra instinct goku and i'm glad that i have this one as a double instead of like one of the regular ones because his hair is a little lighter and one thing i've realized with this is that darker objects like his black hair are gonna be harder for it to scan. Now, I did reach out to them, and in some of the tutorials I saw, there are workarounds like manually going through the exposure to get like darker hair and darker objects outside of just using tracking points, like what I would have used on the Ranger visor. I probably, if I were to go back and do it, I'd put some tracking dots on it. But because this is light, I don't think I'm gonna have to worry about that so much. And also, as I was going through them, I realized they had a duplicate of this Super Saiyan Vegeta. Don't tell my wife, these are kind of expensive. They're not prohibitively expensive, but enough to where like you can't, like we can't be going around just buying doubles and triples of everything. But I do have a double of this one as well and it's super Saiyan, so no black hair, no real dark objects or anything on it. So we might do this one too. Wow, it's actually articulated really well. All right, let's give it a go. All right, let's give that a try. So far, the things I was mostly worried about were the hands. It seems there was some distortion there. Struggled with his feet as well in his other hand. It looks like when I was moving, I probably inadvertently messed up some of that. And then it struggled a little bit with his face. Like it got this side real good, just right, even the hair is pretty good. And then over here, I think lost track. I think because I was just moving around too much and the hairs, there's so many polygons and shapes and whatnot, so it was trying its best with some of the points that it made. That's why areas like his back and his arms, like the rest of it looks pretty good. So I think doing it again, I'm gonna just tripod it. I think I'm just getting too brazen with trying to move it around and whatnot. Um, and this is a pretty small figured head, like it's not very big. So the fact that it's getting those details right is really good, like on that one side of the face. It's just that I gotta stay still and just let it run, let it work. This time we're enabling the color setting, so this will be an interesting uh, test. It, it was actually just the flip of a button. One, one thing I will say about this is that it is pretty user-friendly and just like, hey, you want color, click this. When it's something as complicated or something that is as technical as trying to get a 3D model. So this is my first attempt using color. And I can already see a, a mistake I made and that was just my light sources are not very consistent. <laughs> it's like really, really blown out here, kind of darker shadowed in here. And I, I think it wasn't sure how to process that. I didn't get enough data up top here. As you can see, there are holes, which I should be able to, to fill with just the RevoPoint software. You can see it did a better job with the face. It's cool that it even got some of that color in the eye there. Really just looks like it's gonna be practice on my part, playing with the hardware. It looks like it, I didn't touch anything. It looks like it might've just corrected some of the coloring issues on its own. Yeah, we, we definitely know that from the chest because the coloring was all messed up a second ago. Yeah, I didn't touch anything. I, I don't know uh, why it uh, kind of auto fixed itself there. I'm not complaining. Oh, cool. And I can turn the I can turn the color on and off to what the actual model itself is looking like. And in a stroke of good luck and 72 hours later, the Ranger helmet finished printing on the second printer. 
So this took a little longer than what I was expecting. It was about it's like 71 hours, almost three full days. Part of the reason for that is I made it a little like thicker, so it's just got a little bit more weight to it. It was like a 25% infill or something like that. Um, not quite as heavy as the real one, but it's still got a little bit of heft to it. I'm gonna remove some of these supports now. All right, so this is our original model, the one that we used, and then this is the 3D replica. How freaking cool is this? And again, keep in mind that this is just an out of the box, imperfect scan on my part with a fill hole function for like the visor and the eyes. This is without any type of touching up, any type of post work. And uh, it's, I mean, even still, it's pretty great. I'm actually, especially the visor, I thought was gonna be a little bit more blocky, but it's actually coming out pretty round. You can still see some of the imperfections just because I didn't do a good scan around the edges there, but even still, without doing that, that's still stuff I could sand down and then um, I could even you know paint this to, to match. But just the fact that this is possible is so freaking cool. Now I'm just gonna put this here with some of my other models that I've yet to paint. Now you'll just stay there forever and I keep telling myself I'll paint all you guys at some point. I was going to move on from the action figure scan and maybe try to touch it up in part two, but I was really unsatisfied with the way that it turned out. I was using the one-click auto feature that sort of does everything all at once, but a contact at Revapoint gave me some pointers, including using dark mode and changing the exposure of the camera to help get some of those darker objects. After manually changing some of the settings, including my point distance and the mesh quality, I was able to get the model to look much better. I also went back and tried removing some of these little straggler points that didn't really know where they wanted to be just to help when I compile the final version. And I also wanted to make it a point to do all this on the fly. This is not in the software. This is actually a screen recording on the Revapoint Morocco scanner itself. And the result is that the final version looks much cleaner, much clearer than my first attempt. There were still some slight imperfections and a lot of it has to do with the way that I was scanning. So I'm still getting the hang of that. I'm really not scanning from underneath the model enough. So whenever I do a final composition, it sort of has to guess what the color and what the texture of these missing holes are supposed to be. Regardless, the more I learn about the software and the technology itself, the better my 3D models are going to be. So I'm hoping in part two, I'll have learned enough and have had enough practice at that point to create near perfect models. I'm including all of my mistakes and the learning process so that if you decide to get one of your own or one of their other models, you don't feel quite as alone as you're beginning that learning curve. This is all new technology. And the fact that it's even available at a consumer level is really cool. There's something Tron-esque about taking a, an object in the real world and creating a perfect digital replica of that in the digital world and utilizing it for a ton of different purposes. For me, VFX, possibly animation if I can get the hang of it. Practical things like scanning bolts or objects that you need for your work if you're like a mechanic and all types of cool stuff. Make sure you subscribe so you can be notified when I post the follow-up video. And of course, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so that you can check out Revapoint yourself and some of their other items that they have. Then you can come back to this video or the follow-up one and let me know about all the things that you've scanned and maybe printed or worked on in Blender or whatever it is that you're trying to do. But anyway, that is it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video, everyone. Take care.